I've got a new Voron 2.4 R2 from an LDO Systems kit. It worked great for about a week, but I've recently started seeing very flaky behavior from the bed. Specifically, when heating up the printer to about 100 degrees C, it would sometimes restart with a, quote, heater bed not heating at expected rate, unquote, error. And that would cause a firmware lock, you know, freeze, and I'd have to restart the printer and it would kill the warm up. Debugging, I could see the temperature reading jumping up and down by two to five degrees very rapidly, much faster than the bed or even the small thermal mass of the thermistor could change temperature. I tried to correlate it with electrical noise sources, motors, heaters, etc., but no luck. I replaced all the cabling with a twisted pair from an Ethernet cable and new connectors. No change. The issue would come and go. Finally, this morning, I caught the above screenshot. This was cooling down from 100 degrees C. The thermistor reading started flaking out at 35 C. No motors, no fan, nothing. I wasn't even in the room. It was clearly a problem with the thermistor, as I had replaced all the wiring. Unfortunately, the thermistor is glued to the bottom of the bed. It would take surgery to remove, test, and replace it. As I flipped over the bed to dig it out, however, I saw there was a small splice between the thermistor and the back of the bed. I figured I'd try that first. I hooked up my voltmeter, was reading about 120 kilo ohms, about what I expected. However, if I touched either side of that splice, the reading would flake out. It would basically disconnect, reconnect, give flaky readings. Sometimes it would re return to 120 kilo ohms, sometimes it wouldn't. I had a smoking gun. I stripped off the heat shrink to see that there was a small crimp connector on each side. Touching that had no impact on resistance. I suspect the pulling of the removing of the tube had reseated the connection. I could have just added some solder, but then I wouldn't have had heat shrink on it, and I didn't want to use electrical tape there. So I cut the connection, pulled the wires in from the back of the bed to get a bit of slack, and soldered it, heat shrink, and I've got a rock-solid connection that hopefully will solve the problem.